Today's video is sponsored by Clip Studio Paint. If you're struggling to find an art program, I really recommend this one. Hey, it's me, your favorite artist that you obviously subscribe to. Welcome back to another unscripted video. Today, I'm going to show you how to use Clip Studio Paint. Now, let me be let me be real with you, okay? Clip Studio is not at all hard to use. The only reason it looks hard is because of the um, amount of features they give you. In my opinion, this by far is one of the best uh, art programs to use and I'm going to show you why. So as you can see, once you open up Clip Studio, this is the default setup you're gonna have. You're gonna have your pens here, your pen property here, brush size, your colors, your navigator, your effects, layers. And I'm gonna tell you that you can completely customize it the way you want. So here, I'm gonna usually do what I do. So usually I have this stuff. I don't know if I can grab it all actually. Oh, I can't. All right, well, I'm gonna leave it in the way you you understand me, right? You you can completely move everything how you want to. It's to your choosing. Actually, wait, I can just move everything below that one. So if I don't want the brush size, go ahead, just get rid of it. Um, all right, well, I have to drag it out and then close it out. And then we can put this under here. If, if it wants to go under there, like that. You see, I like this. I also like using these features over here. So I'm also going to spread these out a little bit and put this as much high as I can. So this is pretty much the default I use. My colors up here, brushes are here, tool properties here, navigator, effects, and then layers. And then depending on what kind of what kind of art you like doing. So let's say you're an animator, you can open up whatever you want. So let's say you want your time level up for your animations. You can do that. If you're not an animator and this is popping up for you, just close out of it. If, if it's unnecessary, you don't need it. Even the color things by it, like I usually use these so I don't delete them. But if you don't know what the hell this is, just delete it. It's fine. You can customize anything you want of it. So for this video, I'm going to show you exactly my drawing process in Clip Studio so you feel more comfortable towards the program. And I'm going to show you why it's not really that much of a thing to worry about. You see all those tools here? You see all of them? You're not going to, well, you're going to kind of use all of them, but you can completely rearrange all the groups your pens are. You can completely, you can like, if you don't even want all this, you can just throw it out, delete tool. Just, you could just straight up chuck it if you want to. It's like Clip Studio, super customizable. If you want something to fit your workspace, you can always edit it like that. And if you want to have more like different workspaces, you can always register, uh, register ones, but I'm not going to do that because I just changed mine. And... Another thing really good about Clip Studio is their clip, their clip assets, okay? Their Clip Studio assets. So let's say you don't really, you don't really like the pens they give you, you know? I mean, maybe G Pen, maybe it looks a little wonky to you. And you don't know how to, you know, you don't know how to use the properties. Like even, even myself, I don't know how to use all the properties and I don't really feel like making my own brushes. So what you can do is go to Clip, the Clip Studio app. You can go on Clip Studio Assets, and this is filled with tons of brushes from artists who use this program. So let's scroll down here, top free. And see, look, full of paint brushes that maybe your favorite artists even use. This is where I get everything that like all of my brushes, because I mean, I, I have no idea how to make brushes. So like, I just go on here and find whatever I can. And it is absolutely amazing that they like offer you this. You don't have to go online, potentially download like brushes with viruses. You don't have to adjust any of the files in your application. You don't have to do any of that. It, it, it just comes with it. And that's what's so awesome about it. So I already downloaded some brushes uh, over here. All I downloaded was a pen brush, because to be fair, I, I really like the watercolor brushes that they do offer. So down here, you see, you can see it's a customizable one. And I really like it. It feels like a pencil brush, which I don't really like pencil brushes, but you know, this one's just really, really good. So here, I'm gonna show you my exact process and drawing. So first off, we're gonna pretend like this canvas doesn't exist. So how do we start a canvas? Well, it's pretty easy. Just go to file, new, and then with height, we I usually use 3000 by 3000. And then resolution, I'm pretty sure that only matters if you're printing, but I'm not sure. I just use the default 300. And then just, okay. And then this is the view you get. Over here is your layers. 
I'm gonna, uh, so you don't get mistaken. Usually artists used raster layers, vector layers are more for like logos and stuff. Uh, I'm not gonna talk about it too much, but that's it. So you're gonna wanna do a new raster layer, okay? So we already got one. So let's just start drawing. I'm gonna draw an old uh, picture I had a long time ago. So what I'm gonna do is I wanna draw a front facing anime girl, but I like I don't wanna draw both eyes separately. It's too hard and I really don't know how to balance shit. So what we can do, go to rulers. All of these rulers are very good. They give you linear rulers, curved rulers. Uh, fucking, I don't know how to take this off. Okay. And then what we need right now though is a symmetrical ruler. So what this does is if your brush allows it, you can draw on both sides. And this is really useful for drawing front faces. So let's do that. I'm going to probably go silence. So give me a little bit. Oh, and by the way, um, if you wanna know, uh, I usually zoom in at about 100% and uh, yeah, just 100%. Yeah, just learn what everything does and just organize to what you need and don't need. All right, once again, the five things you do need is the toolbar, subtool, the color, tool property, layers, la layers, and navigator. That's all you really need. And this upper bar. That's all you really need to become an illustrator. So let me switch to my watercolor and I'm gonna do something called uh, grayscale shading. It's like where you only color like in grayscale and then you color it later. It's really cool. It makes you like focus on the shadows and stuff. I don't know, but I'll show you. So I'm going to start watercoloring. All right, look at her, looking a little bit more shaded. So this is called ambient occlusion. I kind of messed that up in my how to shade video. Um, ambient occlusion is basically your character and white light all around her. So like, where would shadows be? This is where shadows be. This where this is where would this is where shadows would be if there was color all around her. All right, now that we got our AOE, we need our actual shadow. So like what actual shadow is, it's like, it's the part that actually is determined by the environment. So let's say the shadow is coming this way. And now I am going to color based on that. Hold up, what I also need to do is clip this on. What is this? I don't know what this layer is for. I'm gonna delete it. I'm gonna clip that on there. And then clip this one on there. Fuck, where's clipping? Okay. So now we are going to do key shadowing is that is what this reference calls it.
As you can see now, the drawing looks more like in an environment. So like the AOE kind of made it, made the basic shading while the key, the key shadow kind of made it look like, oh, it's in, it's somewhere. The light's coming in from here. It's hitting the cheek, you know, that kind of stuff. So now I have to apparently color it. So give me a second. I think I'd rather just leave it like this. And honestly, I, I, I have no idea how to convert this into color. But, you know, the point of this tutorial was to show you that it's really not that hard to use Clip Studio Paint. Once again, really all I did was use layers, find tools, pick a color, and move around. Uh, that's all you really need to become an illustrator. You can get more depth into things once you start gaining more experience, you understand things more. Like, one big thing is stabilization. So, a lot of people are like, yo, why, why is my pen so wiggly like when i draw it's so wiggly and it it sucks well that's because of stabilization if you have it all the way up then it's easier to create smoother lines and not a lot of people know that surprisingly but anyways once again really all you need to understand is right when you start it up all you want to do is organize it all organize the layer the layout to how you want it the most if you want color palettes you can use that if you want a timeline for animation, you can use that. I'm not gonna get into too much detail and uh, like what each thing does, but really I'm just giving you tips on how to start with it. So um, I hope you like that video. So I'll see you soon.